You're listening to episode number 5 of the Confident Creator Show. First up, I'm so, so grateful for the support I've been getting since launching this podcast. Thank you so much for listening in, for the rating and reviews. That gives me and my team so much encouragement and joy that what we're putting up here is resonating with you. You guys are so incredible. I hope today's episode will be super useful for you because today we're going to chat about self-sabotage. I know some of you are going, I don't want to face myself or listen to this because it's hitting too close to home. And the reason why you feel that way is because I think many of you know or are aware to some degree that you have behaviors and habits that are harming you and limiting you from finding success. My friend, I know it's difficult to confront our deep-seated destructive behavior and that it is easier to just simply lock them up in a large box and put it away in the attic. I know you would rather hear action steps to getting your first client or learn how to price your work, and you will. Those are topics that we'll definitely cover in future episodes. You know, I created this podcast to help you understand the ins and outs of running a business, and that includes setting you up for success. Even if that means exploring topics that you may not be comfortable with, such as confronting and dealing with your self-sabotaging habits and behaviors. So settle in, my friend, and keep an open mind. Hey there, I'm Maya De Leon, and my mission is to help creatives like you translate what you love to do into a highly profitable income. I'm a mom of three who began as a lettering artist and grew it into a six-figure business. If I made it possible, so can you. Every week, we'll dive deep into topics like building your confidence, getting comfortable talking about money, and nurturing your passion while juggling life and family. So if you're an ambitious creative who wants to craft the life you love, get cozy, feel at home, and listen to The Confident Creator Show. Have you ever found yourself avoiding work by doing other seemingly productive tasks? Like you're supposed to start drafting concepts and ideas to present your client, but instead, you decide to work on updating your finances or decide to take new photos to share on Instagram. Or, when you go on Instagram, you start scrolling through your feed and start feeling that your work isn't good enough. So, you decide to abandon a personal project halfway because you didn't think it was worth working on after seeing the other cool projects that other creatives are doing. Or how about that time you see another person's work that gained a lot of traction and you find yourself feeling resentful, angry, and jealous that they are gaining recognition for a piece of work that looks so simple, yet your work, the one that you had put so much effort into and clearly had so much better details, wasn't gaining the attention you thought it deserved. These scenarios that I just described, they are self-sabotaging behaviors and habits. According to Psychology Today, self-sabotaging behaviors are counterproductive behaviors that create problems in daily life and interferes with long-standing goals. That's right, my friend. You are standing in the way of you finding success. Take that in for a second. The things that you're doing, the procrastination, the negative self-talk, the comparisons, the self-pity, they are preventing you from achieving your goals, from achieving the desired life and business that you want. I know it's hard to take in, and you might be in denial over this, but recognizing self-sabotage in ourselves is difficult because sometimes it's so subtle. We are not aware what we're doing is destructive and harmful in the long run. Think about it. What's going to happen to your quality of work when you wait till the last moment to hand it over to your client? You're not giving your best work because you're not giving yourself enough time to sit back and be critical about your work or enough time to make changes and edits till it's the best it can be. And what about your due diligence to your client? When you're not delivering the best work you can do for your client, you're shortchanging them. They might accept that work, but they might be so disappointed that they will not consider you for future projects. 
Think about what that will do to your reputation as a creative. What about jealousy and comparing yourself to other creatives? I've seen this played out so many times. Eventually, you're going to play the victim card and start blaming everyone else for your lack of success. When you do this, wallow in self-pity and jealousy. What do you think is going to happen? You start seeing everything as a competition and you start accusing others of encroaching on the niche that you thought was exclusively yours. Instead of creating and developing your work to make it even more distinctive and unique, your work starts to degrade while your air quotes competitors are improving, refining, and pushing the envelope on creating better work. I'm not trying to scare you. Okay, maybe a little bit. And that comes with the territory of being a mom. I'm just dealing you with straight facts here because like what I said earlier on, I care so much about your success. Let's take a look at why we engage in self-sabotaging behavior. Remember episode one of the show? The first in the series of tackling the top three roadblocks that you have? In that episode, we talked about fear. So if you can recall, the reason why we feel fear is that it's a self-defense mechanism. In the same way, your self-sabotaging behaviors are a defense mechanism too. It's your subconscious brain going, warning, red alert, you're stepping out of your comfort zone, time to do something about it. And so you start engaging in habits and behaviors that are going to stop you from stepping out of that comfort zone. Comfort zone is one of the biggest reasons why you do it to yourself, but you may also have other reasons. From lack of self-confidence and self-worth to feeling like you're an imposter or even going as far as to accept the fact that you're going to fail because accepting the fact means you're at least in control of it. It's crazy, right? But if you really dig deep down and be honest with yourself, you'll find the underlying beliefs that you have about yourself deep in your subconscious. So how do we stop self-sabotaging ourselves? Well, the first step really is understanding what is self-sabotaging behavior and why you do it. And guess what? You've done that already. You just listen to what is and why we self-sabotage. You just discover that it's undermining you and your business and how it can really affect you in the long run. But knowing what it is, is different from figuring out what your self-sabotaging habits and behaviors are and how to deal with it. That's going to take a bit of self-reflection and thinking. And I'm going to help you with the top three common self-sabotaging behaviors and habits that creatives have, plus the steps you can take to overcome each one. Number one is procrastination. Yes, I talked about this earlier on. Procrastination is when you delay things till the last minute or avoid doing the work that you really need to do. Now, procrastination doesn't mean you're being lazy because think about it. You avoid the real work with other work. Doing your finances isn't lazy. It's still an important task to do. But why are you avoiding the work that you really need to do? Why do you wait until the last hour to complete it? These are some of the questions you need to ask yourself in order to get to the deep-rooted fears you may have associated with doing a particular task. And sometimes, it helps to talk it out with a friend or a business partner. How do you, then, stop yourself from procrastinating? There are many ways to do this. In fact, you can Google for the answers, but I'm going to share with you the things I do to keep on track. Break it up into simple, smaller tasks. Sometimes if the project or work seems too large to undertake, that can cause you to start avoiding the work. So breaking it up helps. If you give yourself enough time, every small task you do is going to be a win. And you should start seeing it as a win, even if it's a tiny one. It's still bringing you a step closer to you completing your work. And here's a special bonus tip I learned from my own business coach. I've heard this a lot of times before, and probably you did too, but never really applied it early on. So when my own business coach talked about it, I thought, why not try and see how it goes? I was mind blown. Here it is. I use a kitchen timer for every task. Yes, you heard that right. 
That little timer that's been sitting in your kitchen is going to come in handy. Time your every task. For example, if one of your tasks is responding to email, set a timer for 30 minutes and finish that task within that time frame. When the timer goes off, stop and proceed with the next task. Or you can also take a short break and do the next one. You might be thinking, how does this help? Well, my friend, when you have a time limit to your task, you'll be less likely to get distracted because of that time pressure you've set for yourself. When you are free to do a task, you'll end up floundering on social media or answering texts or DMs, and then the day is over. This tip might seem familiar because it's a variation of the Pomodoro technique, but whether you try using it or the original technique, or what the other one that my business coach suggests, the results are the same. Go on and try it for yourself. The second thing is have an accountability body or group. Join up with a mastermind or a group coaching program. I'm part of the Shrimp Club by Laura Belgray, and the amazing people in my group have kept me accountable. I also run my own group coaching program, the Elite Creators Inner Circle. It's a six-month program where I help creatives grow their business. I know for many of you just starting out are going to say, I can't afford to be in one. By the way, that right there is self-limiting negative thinking. Can't afford to be in one, you say? Let me tell you. There are plenty of great groups that you can join that costs less than $50 a month. Some are even free. You just have to find the one that helps you. And also, who says you can't start your own accountability group? I'm pretty sure many of you listening in would love to be in a group. In fact, I encourage you to do this. Find other fellow listeners in the Confident Creators Facebook group and post, Does anyone want to form an accountability group? You'll be surprised. Number two is a close relative of procrastination, and that is perfectionism. Perfectionism is feeling dissatisfaction that your work is never good enough. Let me tell you, that way leads to unhappiness and it's a thinking that is going to completely stop you from doing anything at all. While it's totally understandable that you want to make sure that you are doing your best work, Achieving perfection is unattainable. You will never be happy with yourself and your work. Maybe you're a creative that is starting a business, but you only want to do it once everything is just right. And what does just right really mean to you? Is it knowing everything there is to know about running your business? Or is it making sure that your website is perfect and you have all the contracts, processes, and marketing all written out? If I did that, my business would have never even begun. I would never have launched my course, Mastering Hand Lettering. I would never have created this podcast. Did you know that my team and I started writing the first few episodes before we even settled on the name? There is no right moment to start. There is no perfect artwork. You've heard the phrase, done is better than perfect, right? I want that to be your mantra as you work towards changing this thought that everything has to be perfect. And like procrastination, you also have to think about the fears that you have about being perfect. Don't you find it tiring to want to be perfect all the time? Just thinking about it tires me out. Develop self-compassion and give yourself grace. Learn to accept and find beauty in the imperfections because you deserve to be happy. All right, moving to the last one. Number three is comparing yourself to others. I get this. I've been caught in the comparison game when I was starting out. I measured myself against other lettering artists. I felt intimidated by their skill and quality of work that I started questioning myself. Who am I to try and make a living from lettering? Who am I to call myself a lettering artist? Those thoughts were in my head too. There's a saying that you shouldn't compare your beginning to someone else's middle. I frankly don't know who to attribute this go to, but it is a quote that rings true for everyone. It's not a race, 
No one starts at the same time and you won't get an award for winning this imaginary race you think you're on. You say that you're not great compared to this person. Yes, you might just be starting out, but you will be. How many pieces of art have you created compared to the person you're measuring yourself against? 10 over their 100 pieces? That right there is not a fair comparison at all. And no, I'm not telling you to go and compare yourself to a peer because it's the same thing. It's unfair to compare. Do you know where comparison can work? It only works if you're doing a science experiment. Let's go back to school here. When you do experiments, you have a control or baseline and then you test for one or two variables. The objective is to prove or disprove a theory. Let me ask you, what are you trying to prove here? That you're not good enough? Here's another question. What is the control or baseline that you and the other artists you're comparing yourself against? Firstly, why are you even trying to prove that you're not good enough? You are good enough. Secondly, this science experiment you're doing is invalid. There is no baseline. You have a unique touch, perspective, skill, and thinking than anyone else. So how are you going to compare yourself fairly? I need you to start believing in yourself, that you are capable of doing anything, that your work is or is going to be just as amazing. Write an affirmation telling yourself just that, or even better, make it into a piece of art you can proudly display where you do your work. And here's another thing I want to say to you. Stay on your lane and focus on your work. If you have to unfollow other creatives or take a break from social media, do it. Because that's what I did when I caught myself in the comparison game. I know there are many other self-sabotaging habits and behaviors, but going through every single one might take hours. And I know that you may have more than these three habits. So instead of adding on to these top three forms of self-sabotage, I'm going to end this podcast with some tips you can do to help overcome these behaviors. Number one, be more self-aware of your habits and actions. Start questioning why you're doing certain things and what it is that is really driving you to engage in these behaviors. Number two, have more self-compassion and empathy for yourself. Sometimes we are too hard on ourselves questioning our decisions, overthinking things, and projecting our thoughts on others. Forgive yourself for any mistakes you make. Develop a positive inner voice to replace that inner critic. And lastly, set the bar low when changing your habits or behavior. Pick one habit or behavior and start with a small change. Do you catch yourself stress eating when under pressure? Why not start replacing unhealthy snacks with healthier ones? When you start with some big change, it's easy to get tired of it and revert to unhealthy habits. And don't forget to practice self-compassion when that happens. It takes time to form new habits and you may have to constantly restart, but eventually your new positive behaviors will take root. And we've come to the end of this podcast. I know it's a difficult subject to confront, but I want to let you know that listening to the end of this episode is already a small win. So to recap what we've learned today, we learned what self-sabotage looks like and how it is harming your business and your life. We also learned about the three most common habits and behavior, procrastination, perfectionism, and comparison, plus the steps you can take to change these self-sabotaging habits. So I want you to do a little happy dance wherever you are because like I said, listening to this might be uncomfortable but you got through it. Now before I go, I just want to let you know that I have a lot of resources on my website, mydeleon.com to help creatives like you in terms of growing your skills, getting high paying clients, pricing and more. Just head over to mydeleon.com or get the show notes at mydeleon.com slash ccs5 where I will have all the links ready for you. If you like today's episode, I'd love it if you can rate and leave the podcast a review on iTunes. 
And if you haven't already, you may also subscribe so you can get a notification when we release new episodes every week. And as always, keep creating and stay confident. Until next time, this is mine.